Roy Courtney is a middle-aged man who is used to committing fraud in various ways and one of which is through online dating. This time the target is a wealthy widow named Betty. Betty and Roy fill out a dating website questionnaire and like each other's profiles. They begin chatting online and agree to meet for dinner. At their first meeting, Roy pretends to be an innocent and lovely man. Betty says her husband died a year ago, and she only has one grandson. Roy wants to attract Betty's sympathy by saying that his wife had died three years ago and only has his son who lives in Australia. Not long after that, Betty has to go home with her grandson named Stephen. While Roy only hopes that she will contact him again. After that, Roy goes to meet his partner named Vincent. They offer to cooperate with the two men they met and invite them to trick Russians who want to invest £800,000 and reassure them that the money will double in a short time. But to convince those Russians, Roy needs them to invest in him with their own money. The investment money worth £800,000 will be distributed equally. One of the men is provoked by Roy and immediately says his name. He's brain and asks the Russian's identity. But Roy doesn't know the name of the Russian because he did it the same way as now that they didn't mention each other's names. Bryn finally agrees. A moment later, Betty is seen contacting Roy and they go to the cinema. On their return, Roy suddenly falls. He says that his knees are often like that to take Betty's sympathy. The next day, the meeting starts and Roy starts his action. He says that this investment is a joint project to buy property in the Caribbean and arranged for resale at a profit of two times. These Russians are pretty interested and immediately transfer their money of £200,000. But just before the Russians transferred, Bryn makes a joke about Russia which makes them annoyed and leaves them. They fail this time. The next day, Roy has an appointment with Betty but unfortunately the restaurant where they meet is closed. When Betty sees Roy's knee is still sore, she proposes at her house with her new car. Roy is very interested and they go to her house together. Stephen comes when they arrive and it seems that he doesn't like Roy. Stephen offers to drive Roy home but Betty discovers that he still seems unwell and lives on the top floor. She offers him to stay at her house so he doesn't have to climb all the stairs until his knee gets better. In the morning, he goes outside Betty's house to smoke and sees someone watching him with a car. He wants to go out but Stephen immediately offers him a ride because Betty told him to. He says that he wants to go to the hospital because his friend is there. When he arrives at the hospital and sees Stephen has gone, Roy immediately changes clothes to go to the meeting place. This time they convince them by increasing the investments, and the transaction is successful. Suddenly, sirens are heard down the street. Brain and his friends panic and immediately run. After the two of them leave, Roy and the others immediately laugh. It turns out this is all a scam aimed at Brynn and his friends. After that, Roy pretends to go to the hospital to be picked up by Stephen. The three of them have dinner together, which is a farewell night with Stephen due to his college purposes. When they go out, Roy sees the person he had previously seen in the same car but Betty says she doesn't know who it is. The following day, Roy and Vincent meet the Russian man who turns out to be named Vlad and feels inadequate with the payment received yesterday. Here, Roy's cruel character begins to appear. He orders his henchman to beat Vlad's hand with a meat chopper. After that, he goes back to Betty's house. He thinks this is a good opportunity to manipulate Betty, but he must know how many assets Betty has. When Betty comes home, Roy is seen sitting with Vincent. Roy says that he wants to make a letter of inheritance, and Vincent is an investment advisor thus he can help them. Then Roy says that he will inherit all his property to Betty. She is shocked and refuses. She would prefer him to leave it to his son but he doesn't want to. They get on the topic about how Betty manages her financial strategy and she says that she doesn't have any strategy and only has savings from her husband's money and the house. She immediately says that in total, she has 2.8 million pounds sterling. Roy and Vincent are shocked. Vincent advises her to invest the money. However, to limit administrative costs and taxes, Vincent offers to combine her money and Roy in one account so the interest can be much higher. She politely says she'll think about it and leaves. While having lunch at home, Vincent comes to give Betty a check from the profit to make her even more tempted. Stephen suddenly returns earlier and hears their conversation. He tells them to never play with his grandmother's money. Seeing this, Vincent leaves and it is Betty who turns angry at Stephen because he shouldn't have said that. When Roy and Betty eat at a restaurant, he offers her to take a trip together. Betty is quite interested because she had a dream to go to Berlin. The next day, Betty is seen shaving Roy's hair in preparation for their trip. In the middle of their conversation, Betty suddenly falls. Roy is panicking and wants to call the ambulance but she refuses and tells him to call the doctor that used to take care of her. It turns out that Betty has a minor stroke because she didn't take the medicine given. 
Betty did it on purpose because she didn't want to live just to rest in the bed. The doctor says that her life will only last until the end of this year if she continues like this. Roy takes better care of Betty and agrees to go to Berlin. While buying clothes for Roy such as getting him hats, ties, and suits to prepare for their trip, Roy is surprised by Bryn's presence and immediately makes an excuse to part with Betty for a while. He directly pushes the CCTV up so that he wouldn't be caught. When Bryn approaches him, he pushes him until he is hit by a passing train. Then he takes off his jacket and quickly leaves without anyone suspecting him. The next day, they go to Berlin. Surprisingly, Stephen is there in Berlin and will be their tour guide since he can speak German. They start to go for a walk, but Roy is already looking quite bored, and Betty tells Stephen to take him back to the hotel while she continues to walk alone. When Roy is at the hotel, Betty has just returned, but her hand is injured. Betty says that she had tripped over the pavement earlier. After that, Roy and Betty plan to go to a restaurant but Stephen takes them to another place. He takes them into one of the rooms there and immediately asks Roy about this room, which Stephen has been investigating Roy all these times. Roy used to be a British Army soldier and had been involved in a murder in this room. Roy begins to explain everything that happened. He says that at the time, he was working in the intelligence division tasked with hunting down Nazis and was informed that a suspected person named Martin Geiger was hiding in Berlin. He was also accompanied by a translator named Hans Taub. So this is indeed the same room when he and Hans met Martin. At that time, a fight caused Hans to die, but Stephen immediately denies Roy's story because the actual incident is Roy who died while Hans was still alive. Finally, he is honest that he is not Roy but Hans Taub, who came from Germany. At that time, he wanted to get out of Germany because of the war conflict and use Roy's identity to go to England. Their faces were quite similar, so Hans easily left Germany. Stephen is so angry that Roy has been lying to them all this time, but Betty stops him. After this incident, they decide to go home. Betty tells Roy to contact Vincent because she is ready to set up a joint account with Roy as offered. Roy immediately contacts Vincent and arranges his plan. Vincent feels bad if all of Betty's money is taken because Betty is experiencing a serious illness. However, Roy doesn't care and still wants to take all her money and retire, so this is his last scam. The next day, Betty and Roy are ready to merge their accounts. Vincent gives them a keypad to transfer their funds to an account located in the Caribbean. Betty is a little hesitant to transfer the money considering her illness, but Roy tries to convince her by transferring all of his 3.8 million pounds. Finally, Betty also transfers all the money and enters the password together. Betty suggests using the type of flower in her room display, namely lilies. After Vincent leaves, they drink champagne as they discuss how to spend their profits. Roy gets a call and pretends to meet his son who has just arrived in London. Betty suggests Roy to see him immediately and accompany him to the train station. When he arrives at the apartment and opens his bag, he is surprised that the transaction keypad is not in his bag. He calls Vincent and it doesn't work. He also calls the bank but transactions can only be done with the keypad. Roy is furious and has no choice but to return to Betty's house. When he enters the house, he looks shocked that all the things are no longer there, only Betty is sitting in a chair holding a transaction keypad. She flicks on a light and asks what he's doing. He says that his son's flight was delayed, but Betty immediately presses the transfer button for £50,000. She warns him to answer everything with honesty because if he is still lying, she will continue to transfer from their joint account to another account. Betty helps straighten out that she knows his purpose of returning to her house and knows that he never had a child. Now Betty tells him to realize what has been seen in front of him and his eyes immediately fall on the painting of Lily's flowers. At that moment he realizes that Betty is a woman he used to know named Lily. Back in the days when Lily was young. She was the daughter of a wealthy businessman who owns a factory, and Hans was her English teacher. Lily wasn't ready yet thus he waited in the living room. Accidentally, Hans heard Lily's father was talking to the government, and heard the voice of Lily's sister who was practicing dancing. As he peeked, he was told to come in to practice with Lily's sister. Hans accidentally kissed her and got pushed by her. He was expelled and immediately went to Lily to teach her. Lily liked Hans so much that she saved his haircut and kept it in a necklace pendant. Hans was still annoyed because of being humiliated by Lily's sister, and took his anger out on Lily. He realized that she likes him then began kissing her and venting his lust on this little girl. Lily had fought back, but couldn't beat his strength. Lily was young and did not have the courage to tell that incident to her parents. Therefore, Lily's father still called Hans for trying to kiss Lily's sister. He was ordered to leave and dismissed from teaching. Two days later, his father was reported by someone for being accused of treason, 
and it was reported by Hans. Lily's father was sentenced to hang. Factories and money also were taken and her mother committed suicide. She lived a miserable life with her sisters until a bomb was dropped and killed her sisters. She was saved because her sisters let her sleep and didn't work with them. Lily wants to give Roy a lesson. She hires a researcher to track Roy's criminal career. The researcher is Steven. They get to know the kind of person he liked to swindle so Betty knew how to answer the dating website questions at their first meeting. And in Berlin, she went to her old house to retrieve the necklace she had kept. Hans's old hair still exists in her necklace and since he recently had his hair shaved, she simply needs to match it. Lily explained that she had taken all the savings with her and it was thanks to Vincent. Stephen threatened Vincent before they left for Berlin, also the man who was watching the house is one of Betty's grandsons. They both helped her set up the whole thing as well as the doctor. Roy then immediately bows and apologizes, but Lily says she has forgiven him and returns the transaction keypad. But the amount is only £100,000, Roy becomes angry and attacks Lily. But she manages to knock him down. After that, Vlad and Bryn's friends appear in front of Roy. Lily leaves Roy, who is being beaten. At the end of the movie, Vincent is seen visiting Roy, who turns out is not able to speak and is miserable, and while Lily resumes her life with her family. What do you think about this movie? Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and see you, next time.